Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is that time again. Moments in the Word with Pastor Larry Sarton. I am your guest host tonight, his daughter Tiana, and we are about to get started. <laughs> Like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Right, all right, all right. This is what has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. The Bible said, I will bless the Lord at all times. 
and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. If you did not have a good day, it's about to get better because the missionary is in the house tonight. I'm so excited. I get to tag team with my granny. So I'm going to start things off and then I'm going to hand them over to Mother Sarton and then she's going to take us higher and higher. Today we are going to be speaking on Built for Success program to fail. And if you've been around for the last five weeks, this is exactly what my dad has been speaking on on Sundays, Built for Success program to fail coming from the book of Genesis. And he's been laying out how Eve was tricked by the serpent, talking to her and trying to convince her of what God said and what his plan was for her and Adam. And we all know that he was wrong. So never listen to the negative thoughts of someone that knows less about you than the one that created you. So tonight, again, we're going to touch on that same topic, but we're going to look at it from a different angle. And we're going to be coming from the book of Matthew, chapter 5. And that's where our foundational text is going to come from. So again, I'm just going to lay the groundwork. And I'm going to turn it over to Mother Sarden, and she's going to take us from there. So what I want to do is start with a few key definitions. First, let's talk about being successful, and then let's define what it means to fail. Being successful is the achievement of desired visions and planned goals. The achievement of desired visions and planned goals. And to fail means to fall short of success or achievement in something expected, attempted, desired, or approved. And in life, I've discovered that everyone wants to succeed, but nobody wants to fail. When we set out to do something, we have our hearts and minds set on being successful, and our desire, the desire of our heart is to be successful. Then sometimes, someone or something comes along and inserts some intentional or unintentional boundaries on your plan and your thought process. And now what you thought was going to succeed actually failed. So back in the book of Genesis, when Adam and Eve were supposed to have dominion over the earth and everything in it, old Slewfoot came along, that conniving serpent, and he inserted his two cents into somebody else's business. Somebody tell the devil, man, your business. And what was supposed to be a job that had plush, never-ending benefits ended up being a game of hide-and-seek. You all remember, Adam and Eve went and hid from God. You can't hide from God. He knows exactly where you are. He knows what you're doing, when you're doing it, in the back, in the booth, in the corner, in the dark. So you can't hide from God. Ultimately, they failed at the plan that God designed for them because the enemy infected the plan with a mental virus. Now, before we go pointing fingers at them, the Bible says that we all have sinned and we all have fallen short of the glory of God. So at some point or another, we either have failed or we will fail. But I come to let you know tonight that fail, failing does not make you a failure. Failing does not make you a failure. Failing actually makes you stronger and it makes you wiser because it simply means that you've made a mistake. And mistakes are proof that at least you're trying. And because you failed, because you now have made that mistake, you have the results that will guide you down a path towards something different the next time. Whenever you make a mistake, the key is to learn from your mistakes, turn from them, and do something different. I remember watching the Jetsons when I was younger and they had a maid named Rosie and Rosie was a robot. And so Rosie was, she was built to cook. She was built to clean. She was built to take care of the children and she was built to adhere to any command that that family had. But there was this one episode where Rosie, something just terribly went wrong and some wires got crossed in an experiment and Rosie went berserk. She had a total malfunction. 
Rosie started putting things where they don't belong. She started doing things that she wasn't supposed to do. And it was a total failure for what Rosie was essentially designed to do. She was putting furniture in the refrigerator. She was putting food in the in the garbage disposal. She was putting food in the dressers. It was it was totally horrible. And by the end of that episode, they actually found out what was wrong with Rosie. But although she was originally built for success, in this particular episode, she was programmed to fail. Now, failure is not permanent. It's merely a temporary setback. And as I stated, eventually they found out what was wrong with her. Eventually they were able to get her back to her normal state of being. And as believers, some of us have allowed the enemy access into the episodes of our life. And every situation that God designed for us to succeed in, Satan has used fear, doubt, and unbelief to program our minds to fail. And this is one of the main reasons why Joshua 1 and 8, meditating on the word day and night, should be a practice for every believer. You have to put the word on your situation. You have to put the word on everything that you're going through. And I'm just going to give you a little shameless plug. You don't want to miss Friday night with Elder March, but you definitely don't want to miss next Monday where my topic will be, but God, inserting the God factor. During that message, I'm going to talk about inserting God into every one of life's challenges. But let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. Built for success, programmed to fail. Satan has caused you to set boundaries of limitation that God never designed to be part of your life. And like Rosie, we were built for success, but through negative thoughts and experimental wire crossing, we have been programmed to fail. Child of God, the enemy is setting you up for failure, but as long as you have God on your side, you have already been built for success. Granny, it's all yours. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Minister Tiana, you've done a beautiful job with giving us our introduction. Built for success, programmed to fail. And uh, it's coming from St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 14. We're not going to uh, read it like that. You can do it at home. But on tonight, there are four things that we to take away. The first one is to listen. Too oft times we're busy talking and we do very little listening. And to intently listen you can look at a person's face and tell whether they're intently listening to what you're saying. And here Jesus is talking with his disciples. So when the Lord or God through the man of God, a woman of God or whoever is given the word, we are to intently listen because the word is a lamp to our feet and it's a light to our path. And that's from Psalms 119, verses 105. The next thing we would like to take away tonight is, after listening to the word, we must make a choice to obey. It's not predicated on your feelings. It's making a choice yeah. to obey. As in Deuteronomy 30 and 15, where the Lord let them know, uh, choose this day you got to make a choice because when you make the right choice you're not only choosing for you but you're choosing for your family that your family would live and the next thing we would like to take away is we have to realize i can't do it on my own yes i don't know about you but i've tried it it did not Doesn't turn work. out the way i thought it should have turned out so without God, as Jesus said in St. John 15 and, and 5, without me, you can do nothing. 
That's a realization that we have to come to. And the last thing is to develop a new mindset. God is not going to do that for you. You will have to do that for yourself. Yes. And, and that will come, uh, you look, look at Proverbs, the 14th chapter, verse 12, said, there's a way that yes. seems yes. right to man. But the end of that way, it's death. Yes. It's death. So we have to make decisions, choices. But when we get the word, the word builds us. And, and the world has already programmed us mm -hmm. for failure. So we have to be reprogrammed. And that's the importance of the word. So here I was looking at Jesus, the opportunity to teach, to give life skills. Mm -hmm. Because as long as you live... You're going to be here. You need to know how to function yeah. while you're here. Fine, fine. I don't know about nobody else, but there are times I took matters in my own hands. And I got news for you. You will be sorry. Oh, yes, it might make your flesh feel good for the moment. But believe you me, it's short-lived. Because when you want to please God, that means to please him is to do it his way. Yes. It's a decision that you make. Forget about your feelings, but just make that decision. I will obey God. So here Jesus had been in Galilee, and he had been teaching the people. And uh, not only had he been teaching, he had been preaching about the kingdom. And when we, we have to understand, we are under new management, a new set of laws, a new set of principles. And these are the things that as followers of Christ, he is expecting us to live by. Yeah. And on your own, you can't do it. You need his help. So here he has been teaching them, healing the sick, uh, casting out demons and just doing the work of the ministry that God had called him to do. So now he goes, the multitude is following him. He went up in to the mountain. It wasn't like today we have microphones, PA systems mm -hmm. and whole nine yards. But up in the mountain, his voice would echo and carry the sound so everybody would be able to hear. So then his disciples came to him and, and, and they were there in the closer part. So he could really, even though the multitude heard, he was really getting a lesson to his followers. And that's why we come to Sunday school, why we come to hear the word, so we can get instructions how to live this life. You don't know it. You have to be taught it. And the word of God will teach us how to live our everyday lives. So this is the thing. He began to teach them uh, and let them know if they would just do it his way. Just do it my way. Do it my way and you're guaranteed to have success. Yes. Now, Mr. Tiana told us what success was. Now, I don't know about you, but I like success. I like winning. I like Amen. coming out on top. <laughs> that is my thing. I, whatever I go at, I go at it to win it. To win it. As they got to say and say, I'm in it. To win it. To win it. And that's what I, 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 would, I want to do. So in following Jesus, it does cost us something. You got to die to yourself. You got to. Self does not want to die. Self wants what self wants. But you got to unlearn wrong things to be reprogrammed to do the right thing. So Jesus now is taking this opportunity to teach his followers and to let them know you have been blessed. Yes. Blessed. You don't have to feel it. You are that because that's what the Lord said you are. And sometimes we may struggle with just saying what he said. Because that's not the way you feel. But you, your feelings will lie to you. All the time. <laughs> but you have to trust what he said because he never lies. So here, he, he began to let them know, you are blessed. You said, what does it mean to be blessed? We use that word so much, so loosely. But blessed means favor. 
Yes. It's to have favor. It's a gift bestowed to upon us by God himself. And I think a lot of people, Granny, sometimes when we talk about being blessed, they always think that the blessing comes monetarily, that it's always Not. talking about something that's tangible. But the, the blessings of God, like you said, is favor. It's God choosing to do for you what you don't even deserve to have in the first place. Absolutely. And not only that, the blessing is brings happiness and it's endowed power that's given to us by God. Uh, as you say, it's not monetarily alone that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. But when I have my right mind, I'm blessed. Yes. When I have my health and strength, I'm blessed. When, I, when my needs are being met, I'm blessed. So the thing about it is, I'm blessed because God says I'm blessed. It does not matter what I feel, what I have, or what I don't have. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed because God called me blessed. Yeah. And when I can look at it from his perspective, I see what he's saying. So here, I, I, as I was reading this, I've read about the Beatitudes many times, but I was reading it as though it was the first time. And I began to think about it as in today, where we are now. Mm -hmm. The disciples, these, for the most part, these were business people, entrepreneurs, had their own jobs, mm -hmm. had their families, and fishing was their livelihood. Right. All that wasn't taking care of tax and stealing money for the job. It was the thing. Oh, yes, some <laughs> God, some God, people got sticky fingers. Pray for them. Build Pray to for fail, them. build to fail, program to fail. But we want to operate in God's system. So here, the uh, as I was reading this, many times when God didn't say a particular thing to you, mm -hmm. you will criticize what someone else is doing. Well, if he told me, my responsibility is to Trust him and obey him. If you see it, good. If you don't, that's your problem. Exactly. I can't satisfy you and God. I want to please him. That's my chief, chiefest desire to be pleasing in his sight. That should be so our that's ultimate it. goal. Our ultimate goal. Ultimately, that should be our goal in whatever we are going through after is to please God. I want to hear him say, well done. And I want to live my life so I can be an example of what I'm talking about. Because yes. many times we're not that. So I was looking at the disciples, them being businessmen, having their own business. And now Jesus says, drop what you're doing and follow me. Really? And I can imagine people, because people may die, but that spirit does not die. Through somebody else, the devil will use their mouth. Man, you got to be crazy. Yeah. You gonna leave your business and go follow this man? Man, don't you know you got a business to run? Don't you know you got Please. a family to take care of? Don't you know you got a family to take care of? People always man, you are crazy. You are crazy. Yeah. You are crazy. And I can just imagine how those words, if we don't know how to cast them off, they will enter into our head, into our spirit, and they will bring our spirit down. And then we sometimes will start wondering, did I do the right thing? Mm -hmm. So therefore, Jesus had to take it to another notch. He can be touched with whatever we're going through. We're not going through it by itself. That's the good thing about Jesus. Touch with the feeling. He knows what I feel. He knows what I feel. He knows what I'm thinking. And he can be touched with what I'm going through. Yes. That's his word. So we have to know some things about God. So therefore, when they made these accusations, I can just see them feeling some kind of way and it's weighing in because I found out something about Satan. He hits the button, play, rewind. rewind. <laughs> play, rewind. Oh, you're stupid. You're crazy. That makes no sense. Man, you got to be crazy. And I, and I can just imagine one say, you know what? That guy used to be... He's out here. 
you're preaching some kind of stuff that's foreign to us. Mm -hmm. So when you get to thinking about it, what they said would make sense to the natural mind, but it won't make success. Exactly. Because they would be programmed to fail. Well, there's no failure or defeating God because anything he says, it shall come shall to pass. pass. And I, I, I thought about Zenit. Zenith made a product and he says the quality goes in before the name goes on. Before the name goes on. And that's what Jesus was doing here. Putting the quality, which is the word of God, mm -hmm. everything that was made was made by the word, is being sustained by the right. word. So it's you we are built to succeed when we do it his way programmed to fail when we do it the world's way so therefore jesus says look i i think i need to encourage them because right about now your spirit seems to be down you love, love. and i don't know about you but i've been down but i like up better yes ma'am so and Jesus knows what we're going through. And he knows if we do it his way, we will have success. We'll have success in every area of our lives. So he went on to tell him, say, look, boys, I got nine things I want to tell you. Yeah. I got nine things I want to show you. I understand where you are now. I understand uh, we like to know know where I'm going, how I'm going to pay my rent, how this is mm -hmm. going to happen, how that was going to happen. But I remember before I get back to these nine things, when the Lord said, come off the job, the devil swole that paycheck up so big. <laughs> that paycheck was so big. And to, I said, devil, you lying to me. That check wasn't all that. <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm coming off this job. I gave him a two weeks notice. They didn't want me to leave. They held up my unemployment. But I knew God said, come off. And wherever he guides, he always, not every other time, wherever, when he guides, he always provides. Yes. Because why? We're blessed because we represent him. So what Jesus began to say, look, your spirit is down right now. It's down. But you're still blessed. You're blessed because I blessed you. Yes. And that I bless can't nobody curse. That's good news right there. I bless. He said, because what I want you to do when you are feeling down, poor in spirit, feel like I can't make it, turn to me. Don't turn to the world, sister. Yeah. Turn to me. And if we turn to him, he said, I'll meet your needs. I'll lift you up. I will do the lifting up. And he says, uh, you're blessed when you're mourning. Sometimes things happen. Mourn is a deep sorrow. Mm -hmm. Whether it happened to you or someone that you love, it can still hurt. But Jesus said, you're blessed when you even mourn because that gives me an opportunity to comfort you. I don't know if you've ever been comforted by him, but I have had him seemingly I just felt like I was lying in his arms and he was just lullabying me. And I just felt so relaxed, so calm. Whatever I was going through, it just seemed to subside. And this is what Jesus want us to know. I'm here for you. You are never alone. That's you might peace. feel alone, but you're never alone. That That's good that news. That's very good news. Yeah. And he said, look, furthermore, under my system is the new way of thinking. I want you to be meek. Now, you know he had to work on Peter quite a bit, right? And I think uh, most of us got a little Peter got in us. Got a little bit of Peter in us, Granny. A little bit got a little Peter in us. <laughs> so we need to get under a new management. Realize we're under new management. We, If we do it his way, we're built to succeed. We're built for success. That's doing it his way. He said, you're blessed when you're meek. When you take down, it doesn't make you less than. No. It doesn't mean you're weak. It means you are using restraint. It means I could do this, but I choose not to because I represent the kingdom of God. And you are so holding you stronger when you rep when you are able to restrain yourself. You're stronger than that person that was fighting. Thank you. It's Thank you. A whole lot more to hold back. 
you know, so that, you, that you angry and you mad, it takes a whole lot more to just step back and say, you know what, I'm just going to chill than it would for me to just lash out at you. Because my All flesh right. says And that out. is so true. <laughs> that is absolutely the truth. It, it shows that you're not standing in your power. You are relying on him. If we can remember, I'm not representing me. I represent him, mm -hmm. a, 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 the kingdom, a new way of living life. So this is what we want to do. As it was with the Israelites, when the Lord called them out, he set them apart to be a peculiar people so that the rest of the nations would turn their hearts when he saw they saw the blessing, right. how he protected them, how he provided for them, how he just went before them and did all those things. And he, he told them what not to do, but what he said don't do is what they did. Exactly what they did. And, <laughs> and that's bad. If we aren't careful, we'll do the world system in a minute. But he said, you're blessed when you are meek. He said, and furthermore, you're blessed when you hunger and thirst after righteous. righteousness. People hunger and thirst and don't know what they're hungering and thirsting for. That's why they go to alcohol, drugs, all other kind of things that's not profitable to them. They forget they've been programmed, for, built for success. And if they do it the other way, the world system has already programmed them to fail. But he said, if you, you're blessed when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, right living, Doing it my way. That's yes. what God wants to be doers of the word and not hearers Here's only. He wants us to hunger and thirst. He said, furthermore, you're blessed when you're merciful. Sometimes people just want everybody to have mercy on them. They have mercy on nobody. nobody. But if there's another law that says called sowing and reaping. and reaping. If you don't show mercy, why do you think mercy should be shown to you? Mm -hmm. But he says, be merciful. Bring some relief to somebody else. And when your time comes, and it will come, you're going to need someone to show mercy to you. He said, furthermore, be a peacemaker. You're blessed when you're a peacemaker. Yes. You may get bounced around a little bit, but hey, he promised me he would not allow me to be tempted above that I'm able to bear. I just have to realize, Lord, if you allowed it, you have already equipped me to go through what I got to go through with. He says, so what is a peacemaker? A peacemaker is one who helps others solve conflict. I had a friend, dear friend, I believe she'd give you the shirt off her back, but I had a saying, she would get the devil started on a block of ice. Ooh, I'm telling you, <laughs> she would get that devil start. Now, God wants us to be peacemakers. Yes. Not confusion makers and stirring up stuff, start, starting bonfires and what have you. He wants, he said, blessed are the pure peacemakers. So we want to become peacemakers. Okay. He said, furthermore, bless. Blessed when you are persecuted for righteousness sakes. Now, we don't feel blessed when I'm doing the right thing and everything wrong seems to be coming my way. Mm -hmm. You don't feel blessed, but feelings really don't, does not have a lot to do with it. It's obeying what he said. You're yes. blessed because he told you, uh, you when, when uh, you're persecuted because they, they, you are what they're looking at. They're really, the Lord said, when they do it to you, they're, They're doing, doing it to, to me. him. Do it to me. So do like the assembly line. Pass it on to him. He will carry it for us if we give it to him. But if we don't give it to him and we choose to carry it ourselves, I got news for you. The devil be playing play. How you can get this person back and all that. And yeah. now when you come to yourself, oh my God, forgive me for the thoughts of my heart. You got to come down. So he said, furthermore, you're blessed when you're reviled. I, I, I went through this one. I said, I don't feel blessed. I went to church that morning. And guess what they were talking about? How blessed you were when you're being reviled. I said, huh? <laughs> For real? Well, what is to be reviled? To be reviled is to be criticized in an abusive 
angry manner. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel good to the flesh, but Jesus shows us through the Beatitudes how to succeed even in being reviled. Yeah. No, your flesh didn't like it. No, no. And the enemy would tell you what to say to set the record straight, but you can't do that because you remember you're a kingdom's kid and, a, and with a kingdom agenda. And it's a thing we have to retrain, reprogram, reprogram. our minds. It has taken me 80 years and I still work on it, okay? Bless your heart. So the so thing about it is, what, okay. what Jesus said is, this is what you should do. Rejoice. Well, you don't feel like re rejoicing, but your feelings doesn't have a lot to do with it. He said, do it. So when you start, not that you're rejoicing over what you're going through, you rejoice because of your relationship with, him. with God. You rejoice because you have made a Therefore, a joy will come when you shift what's going on from you and give it to the man that said, cast all of your all cares on me. What? I care, for, I care you. for you. I care for you. And he'll do, he does care for us. And I'm thinking, I said, Lord, that's, that's it. We, we have been built for success. What we need has been placed in us. As Zenith says, the quality goes in before the name goes on. In other words, he backs up what he says. Yes. God backs up. It has been tried and proven. All we have to do is allow him to live his life through us, in us, through us. And if we can do it his way, we will see the salvation of the Lord. And we have to be reminded. All of us have to be set Daily. aside. Daily. I talk to myself and I answer myself. I say because the scripture backs me up. I tell myself what myself better do. And I, 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 I Paul said, beat it and bring it under when it doesn't want to come under. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't want to come under. But when it doesn't want to come under, that's when I have to beat it and make it. Oh, you are not in charge. Mm -hmm. He's in charge. And I want to be me for the master's use. use. I want to be that. So when I want to cooperate with his plan, which is his word, he enables me to do what he's already said I could do. So he said, look, boys, I know how you feel because I, I, I grew up in the same world you went in through. And I think about Jesus. I said, Lord, how is it, you know, we, we use it loose. I want to be like Jesus. Do you really want to be like him? <laughs> Have you ever studied what it really meant to be like him? He said, I came to my own. They didn't receive they didn't me. Accept me. They didn't. They didn't even believe he was the son of God to after he died. They my did. Lord, that's a whole <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> All he did was do good. Then they wanted to kill him. <laughs> He said, which one of these good deeds you killing me for? Because that's all he ever did, went about doing good. And when we, the same thing would happen to us. That spirit didn't die. That spirit is yet alive. And he will use whoever gives him an opening. And make it but rise Jesus up. Said, Look, I want to tell you something about what I told you. I told you, you were blessed. You've been empowered to endure anything that comes your way. Yeah. And we can say like Job said, though he slay me. Yeah, will I trust him? Yeah. In spite of, I'm going to yet trust him. Because the one thing that I know, Romans 8 and 28. Come on with it, 20. Granny. Come on with it. Oh, yes. <laughs> and we know, yeah. tried and proven. All things, that's the good, the bad, the ugly, that I understand, that I don't understand. That sometimes happening contradictory to what I believe was yes. going to take place. It still works together for my good. good. Why? Because I know I love him. I know that. Oh, I don't yeah. have to ask nobody that or their approval. I know I love him. And furthermore, I know he, he loves, loves me. me. As pastors say, I know he loves love. me. And 
see, in this theme, there are two fights we see in the Beatitudes. One is the inner fight. And I find out that's the biggest struggle. A struggle. We are. Yes our worst enemy. We are. We don't know it. We don't think it. But we are our worst enemy. Absolutely. The, the fight that's going on inside of us. I want to do this. I want to do that. And the Lord said, well, that's not what I have built you for to do that. And I know with myself, I told the Lord one day, I said, Lord, close your eyes. And the Holy Spirit says, okay. <laughs> that means I won't see what they're going to do back to you. I said, that's okay. Keep them open. Keep them open, <laughs> Keep them open Lord, because I want your eyes to be upon me. I just didn't want you to see what I wanted to do to them. But the thing about it is we got to surrender our will to his will. So he said, look, guys, this is what I want you to always remember. You are the salt of the earth. Yes. You are that. That's what you are. It doesn't matter. What's... I understand pain. I understand sorrow. I understand what you are encountering. But in spite of all that, yes. I need you to be salt in the earth. You said, okay, since I'm salt, what am I supposed to be doing in the earth? What is my purpose? Well, what does salt do? Gives flavor. Salt preserves. Seasoning. It brings out the flavor. Yes. It brings out the flavor. And salt also preserves. Salt also heals. Yes. Salt, according to the medical science, it raises your electrolytes. So salt has a lot of benefits to it. It's in tanning. It's in making dye. Uh, it's so many things that salt is used for. So the thing about it is the enemy sometimes want to not let us remember our purpose here mm -hmm. on earth. Why he called me out of darkness into, into this marvelous light. light. It gets to be more about me than about him. God never intended it to be all about us. Absolutely. It's all about him. And when we keep that, we need to be reminded. We need to be reminded because sometimes in the midst of going through, we have a tendency to forget. And I understand why Jesus, I mean, the Lord said in his word so many times to Israel, remember, I was the one brought you out of Egypt. Remember, I gave you bread when you were hungry. While you was in the desert. I gave you meat. I gave you water. So we have to remember the same God that did that for us then is the same God that would do it for us now. Yes. The circumstances may different. The people's name may change. So here, he, he uh, the world would say, get them back, get them back. Well, I was taught to get them back. Well, we talked about that on Monday, Granny. We can't get them back. You can't get them back. <laughs> but I was taught to get them back. Matter of fact, if they act like it, you get them first. So Amen to that. There won't be no back. <laughs> but that's not God's way. That's not God's way. The Bible said he became humble, uh, obedient even to the cross. Now, all of us have a cross. You might not be nailed on one, but each of us have a cross. We all have our own it's cross. Up to you. Yes. Say, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Say, no, there's a cross for everyone. Yes, and there's one there's for me. Cross My for cross me. is for me. Your cross is for you. But each one of us have one. So when I'm going through my goal through her, I must remember I am the salt of the earth. Yes. Somebody is watching. Somebody need what you have to offer. But if you are acting the same way they're acting, talking the same pitiful, downtrodden way, what are you going to tell them? What are you going to tell them? What salt are you going to flavor them with? But say what God says yes. and keep saying it till manifestation takes place. And it will manifest. It will. It will. 
Sometimes Satan will sit on it, but he got to turn them loose, them goods. You hear what I said? He got to turn them loose. So the thing of it is, we have to realize that what we need, God has already made that deposit. And the scripture says, I will not allow you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. So if God allowed it, not that he brought it, but if he allowed it, he's already equipped me. Yes. He's already given me what I need to succeed, to come out on top. It's for me to go through the process to get there. And so here, here, uh, if I don't do it, I take the old system, as I hear pastors say so many times, when tough times comes, you go back to what, go you, back used to to what you used to do. Uh-uh, no way, baby. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. You got to value your salvation, value your relationship with the Lord, value his words, know his word. He says, David said, I esteem it above my necessary okay. food. Yeah. I mean, the heavens and the earth was made and framed by the word of his mouth. And I found out, Sister uh, Minister Tiana, some things, we put a lot on the devil that the devil didn't do. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. We framed it with our own, the words that come out of our mouths. Yeah. Our words become a snare to us. But the thing of it is, when we're going through, sometimes you got to use the ministry of shut, shut up. up. Yes, ma'am. Shut up and listen to what God got to say. They say, take everything, the songwriter said, to God in prayer. God will speak to you. I don't know about you, but there's times I... I The Holy Spirit says, shut up. I felt stupid, but I shut up. Because when he says shut up, that means shut up. And it might be a you... sentence. When he says, Thank you. Obey, in the middle of the sentence. Obey. Zip it. If he said zip it, zip it. No matter what nobody else think about you or, or feel, you obey God. Make that choice. So the kingdom... We in the kingdom we have to choose which kingdom are we gonna operate in. Yes. God's kingdom of the worlds. Two systems there. You're gonna you're gonna operate in one of them. Mm -hmm. Either God's way or doing it your way. But the Bible lets us know not only are you the salt of the earth. He said, let me say this before I get to the light part. He said, if the salt, yes. if your effectiveness, right. if what you have been program uh, uh, built to do if you're not functioning. And I thought about a little analogy of a chair. <laughs> Have you ever had the prop of a chair, a couch or whatever, the legs leak, boom, boom, <laughs> on, you know? <laughs> if the legs is off the chair, it's not serving the purpose it not was designed for. Not at all. Because if I wanted to sit on the floor, just sit down and do the engine and cross and have it done. But if First, I got to sit on the phone. flat, a, a chair with no legs, that's not the purpose of a chair. So the word of the Lord said, if you're not going to operate in being salt that you were designed to be, what is your purpose for being here? Yeah. What is the purpose? He says, good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the man's feet. Now, we're not telling you that because you can always repent and get back to him. But I'm just saying in the setting here, mm -hmm. what Jesus said. So he said, and furthermore, beyond that, you are the light of the world. Jesus sees us, Minister Tiana, as a finished product. You know you're not finished. I know I'm not finished. Mm -hmm. Because he keeps on working on us. He they, keeps building us up. He's already put the goods in there, but we got to grow into it. Yes. When we come to him, he gives us our salvation. You can never, never work for that, but you got to work it out. Yes. You got to grow in grace and in the knowledge. That's that word. Mm -hmm. Find out how God wants to put it together and make a decision. I'm going to obey it. When we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then we can live out what he said we are. Yeah. But if we do it our way, it's not going to work. 
So therefore, he says, not only are you the salt to give flavor and bring healing and restoration and all those other good things, he said, you're the light of the world. Of the world. You are. That's present tense verb. You are. Not you not will, you be. will become. Not that you will be, has been, you are that now. Yes. Sometimes we may not feel we have a lot to offer, but people are watching you. Anytime you name the name of Christ, they may come and nudge you, bug you, press you, and you act out of character. No sooner you act out of character, they're going to say, I thought. Mm -hmm. I thought you were saved. Well, if you told me I wasn't saved, what make you think <laughs> by doing this? Um, <laughs> help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Yes, I'm saved. This part of my life needs to be crucified, but I'm saved. Yes. Yeah. Say so pray for so me. So Jesus I'm says on. here. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I'm a product. I, I'm a product in what? I'm a work in progress. Yes, yeah, under construction. Okay. Under construction, now some blunders, if you've been saved a length of time, you should have bypassed some of them potholes, at least know where they are, and sharing the appearance of some of that evil. Yes. Learn to ask the Lord to put a watch to your mouth and a bridle to your tongue. Some things you should have grown up to. Mm -hmm. Now, new just coming in, I give you a little allowances, but if you've been here for a while, you should know better by That's now. Some spiritual so he said about yourself. You got to grow. You got to grow. He said, you're the light of the world. You are a, the light of the world. You are not becoming you of that right now. God yes. sees us as the finished product right now. So he tells us, let your light shine. You don't have to make it shine. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. If you got to do all that, that tell me your light is off of them. You need to wash the, the globe. You need Man. to watch the globe. If you got to tell people you're saved, something is wrong with that picture. Something is wrong with it. Even if they call you the devil, don't get offended. They call Jesus not only the devil, but they gave him the name of the chief devil. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, you got to know who you are. Absolutely. I'm who God says I am, not who you said I am. Because people will tell you anything. So, they will call you anything. And if you answer to it and you believe it, that's on you. Exactly. So if they call you a name and that's not your name, why answer? You don't have to answer if it's not your name. Mm -hmm. He said, you are the light of the world. As dark as the world is now, if you got a match light in darkness, it can be seen. Absolutely. In a dark room, strike a match. He used the analogy of a candle. If you put it on a stand, the whole room will receive light. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, in, in the daytime, you can see the city. If you're in the city, the buildings look, oh my God, like ooh, skyscrapers and everything. But if you get in an airplane and fly high enough, yes. That building that looks so extremely tall looks small, looks very small. And just think at night when you're flying, you see the city. It's all yeah. lit up in the midst of the darkness. You see it there. So this is all God is saying. Let your light shine. The light of Christ should radiate through his children. So men walking in darkness will see the glory of the Lord in our lives. And that's what we want. Yes. But not to see me. Granny, I am it. I am not it. I am pointing you to him. Yes. But where we not fall to me, short, but to him. we want to take our light. Like they say, you had it under that bushel. You put it in a basket and then nobody can see it because you're afraid of what somebody might say about you. It's not about what they say about you. It's about you trying exactly. to draw them to him. And it's don't don't hide your light because of what men might say or what people might say. Let your light shine so that God can be glorified in everything that you do. And and so that men can be, he can get the glory. Bring all the glory back to God. Because like you say, it's not about you. 
it's not, about, it's not about you. It's not about you. You're just an instrument. If we could see it, I'm just an instrument. And we have, have so many uh, examples in the scripture. You can take the, the uh, Hebrew boys going in the furnace. It's a king. I hear what you said. But we're not going to bow down and worship you. No. Now you do what you got to do. They went in there and God used them going in the fire. He doesn't rescue us out of every storm mm -hmm. like that. But there are lessons to be learned because the fourth one got in the midst. He said, I'll never leave you. I'm in here. You in the fire? I'm in here with you. I'm in here. Use what you have available, the comfort of my word, the comfort of the love. Yes. And, you know, I, you can look at Paul and Silas just been beaten and everything. When I read in the scripture where they counted themselves blessed to suffer for Christ, how many of us count ourselves blessed? But I'm blessed because God said I'm blessed. Yeah, just because he said it. Just because he said it. I'll see the... I'll see the results afterwards, but I'm blessed because God called me blessed, and I am who God said I yes. am. And, and and another example, this is what I love about him. He knows how to manifest himself. He'll manifest himself. God would do it. God would do it. You know, when I had my car, I, I would tell the Lord, I said, okay, God, I'm going to such and such place. I want you to, I know you're in here, but I want you to show your head. Mm-hmm. I want somebody else to see you and see you in here. Now, he'll take on a form of a person. Yes. And, and this particular night, I was coming from church. I was right where the lady said she saw me. At. She said, I saw you. I said, really? I said, where do you see me at? I saw you on 83rd and Vincent. And I saw that man in the car with you. I said, you did. Praise God. Mm -hmm. That was the Lord himself manifest. That's what I asked him to do. If he showed up in the fiery furnace, why he can't show up in my car? Yeah. He knows what to do. God is a good God. So here, I look at Elisha. When the servant comes running to him, oh, man of God, look what's going on. Look what's going on. We're surrounded. They're going to kill us. Man of God looked at the servant and said, man, <laughs> come on. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, you're looking in the natural realm. Lord, open his eyes. That's what that we need. Be. When we're going through our go through, yes. the Lord to open up our eyes so we can see life from his perspective. Yes. When I look at it from his perspective, I see what he sees. So the Lord opened up the servant's eyes. Cherish was all around, yes. everywhere. And this is what God has given us ministering angels. They are there. We have to give them a sign Pastor says some of our angels so fat and lazy till it ain't even funny because we never put them on an assignment. <laughs> but you have to do that. We have to work the word. God has given up his word. His word is spirit. It's life. His word is designed to do a work in his work. His word never fails. Never. He never fails. He never. We may hit and miss. He never fails. Yeah. He never fails. And we can always thank God for knowing Jesus in him. We are not just a conqueror. We are more than conquerors. The enemy want to make you feel like you're Minnie Mouse. You're not Minnie Mouse. No, man. We are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Why? Because he loves us and he made us. He built us for success. Yes. And we have to unprogram ourselves so we won't fail Amen. and decide, make a conscious decision. I'm going to do it God's way. And you talked about so much, Granny, about being blessed. And we said that being blessed means that you have that favor. But being blessed by God is like being on a job where you have insurance. You know that when you go to the doctor and you pull out that insurance card, they have to honor it. Our insurance card is the word of God. And every time yes, we pull out the word of God on our situation, it has to be honored because we're speaking back to him what he already spoke to us regarding He's our situation. And so as long as you pull out that insurance card, they can't deny that insurance card. As long as your insurance is paid up, they can't deny the access to that card. Amen. They can't deny you access to the Bible as long as you open it up and read it. Amen. The word unspoken is the only one that's unanswered. 
Amen. And the thing of it is, that word, when trouble comes, I found this out. The first thing that should pop in our mind is the word. Yes. That should be the first thing we come up. People may get angry with you. You're always throwing up the word. That's what we it live works by. For me. The word of God. As long as it works for we me. We live by it. We live by it. And we're supposed to let it dwell in our hearts richly. Richly. And if we do it his way, that'll be the first thought. Like slippers, you're slipping on. <laughs> you don't have to slip us. Put a watch to that mouth God gave us. Cage and bridges to yes. keep that tongue in. Now, keep the gate closed if you feel like the wrong thing is coming up. Out. Exercise your but right God, to we are, we got to, I can hear Jesus saying to his disciples, men, I told you all what I said to say this. You are the salt of the earth. Yes. Men are not reading the word, but they're reading you. You are the light of the world. Yes, ma'am. That's what you are, whether you want to be it or not. You can join that army, so you're in it. Yes. So you got to make sure I follow the rules of the army I'm in. So if we, it's a decision, hard on the flesh, but beat that flesh and make that flesh obey. God has given us power to do so. Yes. be doers of the word not just hearers only anybody can talk it quote it but when it gets in your heart it becomes the guiding light for your life it's a daily walk it's a journey and the bible said when you're just a hearer only you deceiving yourself nobody but you gotta yourself. do something if got we gotta to. say something we gotta do something too amen faith without amen. Is dead alone so you is words empty, empty, but we want to speak faith fills words, even when we're going through. Say what we want to come to pass. Many times, all we do is complain about what is not. The Lord didn't tell us to say that. It may be a fact, but truth changes truth facts. facts. And we have, we got to. Know some things about God. When you know some things about God, if I got a thousand dollars in my pocket and you say you look broke, you look like you can't find a nickel or a nail, I don't have to argue with you. I got truth right here. Yeah, I got truth right there. Truth will speak louder than whatever you're saying. So we have to know some things about God. And that you know, that you know, that, that you know, know that you, you know. know. Can't nobody take that away from you. No, and man. that's what I love about God. Well, Granny, we have about two minutes left. So if you would say a quick prayer over the people that God will continue to build us for success and allow us to reprogram ourselves so that we won't fail. I think that would really encourage our hearts tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Eternal Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Father, help us thank to you. bring our bodies in submission to your word, that men will see our good works and they'll glorify you, Lord. We don't want to bring you to a shame, Father, but we just want to do those things that will bring glory and honor to you. Help us, Father, to let our light shine in the workplace, in our homes, in our communities, wherever we go, whatever we undertake, even when we're driving in the street. Yes, Lord. Help us, mighty God, to allow our lights to shine. Help us to bring glory to your name that the world will know we have been with you and that we are your children. Yes, Help us to be good examples. Help us, mighty God. Yes, of ourselves, we realize we can do nothing. But through you, Lord, with yes. your help, your enablement, your power, Thank we you. can do all things because you will strengthen us. And God will be eternally grateful to give your worthy name the praise, all of the glory, yes, Lord. all of the honor. It is yours in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. And Amen. so it is. Amen. Thank you so much, Granny, for being here with me tonight. 
I really enjoyed you. And I pray that the people enjoyed you as well. Come on, give my granny some like. You all were blessed by the word on tonight. It was truly a rich word. And it was definitely something that we can take and we can apply to our everyday lives. So, Granny, thank you again. And have a very, very, very blessed night and a sweet rest. Come on, let's get some hugs in there. We are about to head out for the night. All right. And on Friday morning, if you are interested in Bible uh, Sunday school, join us at 11 o'clock a.m. Friday night. Our pastor will be on, I mean, my brother will be on Facebook Live. <laughs> Pitch hitting, for my, pitch hitting for our pastor. We're praying that our pastors will enjoy their time away from before the mic, that the Lord will strengthen them and keep yes. them, and he will abundantly, abundantly. Uh, enrich their lives. And I thank God for what he's doing in the ministry. And on Sunday morning, if you don't tune in Friday, on Sunday morning at 930, you don't want to miss. Amen. You want to be in the place. Come with expectation in your heart. Get there early. Service start promptly, not one minute after 930. We start, we believe in honoring the Lord, Amen. getting started on time. And God meets us there. So we want you to be in the place. Come with expectation in your heart. And certainly God will never disappoint you. He'll be, he is there because I bring it with me. He's there. So he'll be. If you have some slightly used blankets or you would like to make the donations to our blanket drive, you can do so. The app is in the chat where you can send your donations or you can them to the church. We thank you for all donations. Everything that you give goes back into the kingdom and goes back into making sure that God's will and God's word is going forth. We thank you so much for being here. Continue to pray for our pastor. Continue to pray for our first lady and our ministry. Continue to pray for our nation that God will be glorified. I wish you a sweet rest and remember that we that have the God kind of faith call those things that be not as though they were. And because we know that God is God and he will do what he said he will do, he has us Amen. in the palm of his hand. God bless you. We love you from myself and my parents and our entire ministry. Have sweet rest and God bless.